Well, here we are. We're doing endocrine 13. We're going to talk about the adrenal gland. So let's get started. Uh, the adrenal gland has two parts. I'm going to put them side by side here and we'll uh, talk about them separately here for a little while. But let me look at the word adrenal. Okay, because you can say there's an adrenal gland or and you can say there's an adrenal cortex and there's adrenal medulla. So there's two parts. Okay, well, you should know the prefix ad, ad, when you see that in front of some word, it means toward or near to. Okay, and then renal, renal first refers to the kidney. So in this case, the adrenal gland is near to the kidney and I've got some pictures. It's not always in the same spot in every species so you got to be careful. Okay, uh, careful when you're dissecting. Okay, so here's my little depiction of a gland. Let's say it's cut in a transverse section. Transverse means perpendicular to the long axis. So in this case there's some of the gland behind the screen and some in front of it and that's the long axis, you know, coming at us at the screen and going into the screen. So then if I cut it like this, I get a cross section. And lo and behold, the adrenal gland, as we have already said, has a cortex and it has a medulla. And by the way I positioned my words, you should know the cortex is the outer portion. Uh, not this not the capsule though so when i say outer i'm not talking about like this this is like the adrenal capsule it kind of keeps it together the an outer portion is what i'm talking about with the cortex and then a middle portion is the medulla it's easy to get those two terms mixed up but you should also know know that these apply to other places like you can talk about the ovarian cortex versus the ovarian medulla so when you see those words, for example, medulla, that means the inner part. I guess you could tie medulla with middle. It's just kind of uh, hard to keep those straight, I'll tell you what. Anyway, here's another word that we can refer to this gland. Sometimes it's called the suprarenal gland. Supra means above. So it's a gland that's above the kidney. Now, let's do some morphology or anatomy. Morphology is the study of the structure, and anatomy is like where these things are at. So here's somebody's depiction of, I believe it's the dog um, adrenal gland we're going to be looking at here, but I'm not 100% sure. But it, as, as we go on, you'll see how things are located differently. Well, first of all, here's the adrenal gland here. Here's the left. You know, most of the time when you're dissecting an animal, it's in dorsal recumbency, and the right side of the picture is actually the left side of the animal. Okay. Here's the left adrenal. And notice it's not on the cap or the cranial pole. It's that way in humans, but a lot of animals, sometimes it's in between the main blood vessels, the aorta and the vena cava, and the kidney. Okay, let's do another picture here. Um, so some of these things I know the animal and some of them I don't. On this second picture, which I'm going to enlarge, this is a horse. And they've done a great job with this depiction here because you can see on the left side of the screen, hopefully you can see where I'm at, they haven't really colored anything and haven't labeled anything. This could be what you'd see at a dissection. It's not really fresh tissue, but it's like preserved. Preserved tissue, tissue tends to be kind of monochromatic, all kind of the same color. Well, here over on the right, they've got the left adrenal gland labeled and the right adrenal gland. Notice they're, they don't even hardly look the same and they're definitely not on the cranial pole. And the other thing you should notice about this horse, look at what the right kidney looks like. It almost is heart-shaped versus the left. So 
So that's kind of interesting, something to know. So we know this is definitely the horse. Let's go to a couple more images. I believe this figure that I'm, this picture I'm taking down now is really a ferret. Ferrets have trouble with their adrenal glands. We can maybe mention that near the end. Uh, here's the adrenal gland, a normal adrenal gland. And there's the kidney. And you should know that this direction up here is cranial because here's the liver. The liver is always going to be more cranial than the kidney. So even this, with this partial picture, you should know this is cranial, this is caudal. Okay, let's do another picture. I'll get rid of that one right now. Coming down here, oftentimes when you cut an adrenal gland, sometimes it might look like a, just a piece of nondescript tissue. The cortex looks different than the medulla. Now this one has a relatively thin cortex and a large medulla. But it's one way of verifying that you do have the adrenal gland, not just some other nondescript tissue. And then a lot of times the two glands don't, from the left versus the right, don't look really the same. Now we are ready to do some histology. Here's the horse adrenal gland that's obviously been taken out and stained. And we've got a nice cortex showing here and then the medulla is a darker staining tissue here and you might say what are these openings for uh, what were they well they're usually blood vessels so there's a lot of blood vessels and this is where you're going to drain either the hormones that we're going to talk about producing the cortex or the hormones producing the medulla and they're going to get out of the adrenal by the adrenal vein right okay Let's move that. Well, let's leave that right there. That's a pretty picture. And then here's another histological section of the adrenal gland. We're not sure what animal, because first of all, we don't see the whole thing. But the thing is, you should know from the very capsule in toward the medulla, it looks very different, as the horse one did too as well, than the medulla. Just another figure there. And then finally, I'll get rid of that because... I want another picture coming in here. The more pictures you look at, the better. Here's somebody's depiction. I can't read it. Is that Dorothy? No, probably not. Anyway, transverse section. Remember, that's perpendicular to the long axis. And you get this nice area of the medulla looking so different than the cortex. You should know the cortex has three layers. I'll never ask in an introductory course to name the zona layers, but you should know that there are three layers to the cortex, and lo and behold, they each produce some different hormones. So now I think we know the anatomy and the relative structure. It's a small organ located close to the kidney someplace. Every animal, every species is different. So when you're dissecting, make sure you know what species you're working on and say, oh, I know the, crane, the uh, adrenal glands are here or there or whatever. Now here's a nice depiction of the hormones that are produced by the adrenal gland. And this is precious. Well, the medulla, we know, is in the middle. Well, lo and behold, you should realize that it's actually neural tissue. Now, neural, I'm saying neural, N-E-U-R-A-L, neural tissue, nervous tissue. And it produces these two hormones called epinephrine, which is another word for adrenaline. And then norepinephrine is also termed noradrenaline. Don't ask me why they got all these other names. I could see the adrenaline because adrenaline plays off of adrenal, right? Adrenaline is you spell adrenal and then put I-N-E at the end. In the middle, it's neural tissue and producing epinephrine and norepinephrine. Now the cortex has three layers. This picture only shows, you know, the cortex being one layer, but it's got many hormones. And Here's the three that I'll mention again, aldosterone and cortisol, and then let's say testosterone and estrogen. They're, you know, this is from one layer. This is from a different layer. And then uh, we'll say testosterone and estrogen is from a different layer. I've got a graph that will show that shortly. Well, now I'm going to talk about the three layers kind of rapidly because you can pause this stuff. 
Let's look at one of the layers that makes the family mineral corticoids. That's a family name, like the Johnsons. Who's the most famous Johnson or who's the most famous mineral corticoid? Aldosterone. So that's like a family member. It's like Johnson's and then there's Ben. He's a family member, one of the many. So in this case, aldosterone. It functions in water balance. When you see reabsorb, that means bringing it out of the urine into the blood. Reabsorb sodium and then water follows. Uh, the one thing I want to point out on this slide here is they probably haven't explained. Uh, I will explain about Cushing's and Addison's in a little bit, so I don't want to really point to that. Okay, another layer makes glucocorticoids. Now I'm over here. Glucocorticoids is a family name. It's all one word, not a space like they've shown it. And they've got three family members listed, right? Like Ben, John, and George. But I just want to talk about mostly cortisol. It tends to be a stress hormone. And in stress, you want some more glucose usually. You can have amino acids changed into glucose. You can get some red blood cells produced. You can read that. Again, I'm going to blot out what they've got here because it doesn't really make good sense, but the rest of the slide works good, okay? So then I'm going to take bring this one over here because here's the third layer. And in the third layer, we get the sex hormones produced. Androgen is the family name for testosterone. And then estrogen is really a family name. For example, estradiol 17 beta is probably the most famous estrogen. So like these are groups of hormones, estrogens and androgens. Not much is released from the adrenal cortex. Things can go bad and if the female releases too much androgen, you can have masculinization of the female. This is referring to humans, by the way. And in males, in human males now, if there's too much estrogen, the breasts, breast tissue can actually grow. I probably should put out or spell ACTH out just to remind you that that's the hormone from the anterior pituitary gland that comes to the adrenal cor cortex to stimulate it. Okay, you know, I'm always looking for nice graphs, diagrams that summarize these things because the more you look at the the more you understand things. And so I just have this that somebody's drawn. It's talking about the two adrenal glands together because they do kind of work, you know, in parallel. Um, what one does, the other one's usually doing because like if ACTH is released from the adrenal or sorry, a ACTH released from the anterior pituitary is going to go in the blood and stimulate both adrenal glands. You should know that a lot of, most of the steroid synthesis has to start with cholesterol. But this shows three, maybe I'll call it four pathways. You can get aldosterone, remember, from one of the layers. You can get cortisol from one of the layers. It's interesting to note that progesterone is used to make cortisol. So in this case, Progesterone is a precursor molecule for cortisol release. And then we have testosterone and estrogen over here, coming from an, another common precursor because testosterone and estrogen, their molecules look very similar. Just one little tinker from an enzyme changes testosterone into estrogen. And then over here, they're depicting, remember, the medulla, adrenaline and noradrenaline. There's the spelling if you didn't hear how I was spelling that. Okay, now I want to talk about a couple disorders about the adrenal gland that relate to the adrenal gland. Addison's disease. I didn't put disease up there, but it's Addison's disease. You should know that whenever sometimes people talk about diseases, it's not like it's contagious. Uh, Addison's disease, actually, get my dragger here, is a deficiency of the corticosteroid hormones that are released from the adrenal cortex. So one of our most famous family members there are the cortisol. So there's a deficiency of cortisol. 
in this case. Uh, dogs get this, cats, horses, other animals, humans. And these hormones are needed, as we had said in the past, that kind of deal with stress. And so these dogs have some of these mechanisms not operating. And the only other, you know, it's diagnosed by your veterinarian or physician. And it takes a lot of the adrenal gland not to make hormone for this to occur. I think somebody once said that 90% of the adrenal cortex must be non-functional for this condition to exist. But of course, that could vary a lot. Okay, and finally, I want to talk about Cushing's disease, sometimes called Cushing's syndrome, Cushing's disorder. And it's really the opposite. Here, Addison's was a deficiency. Cushing's, the way I try to remember what it does, it's crushing. Crushing means too much of something. Here's how I express it. Excess production, maybe I'll put it down here. And I'll bring this one down right there. Okay, it's an excess production, production of cortisol or cortisone. Remember, these are all kind of related. There's a family, the glucocorticoids. So in this case, there's too much. And you can, you know, and the one thing you should understand about both of these disorders is you can have a little bit. It's kind of like a whole scale, like let's say one to 10, it can be very minor and there might not be anything you need to do for the animal, of course, consult your veterinarian, or there might be a lot you need to do or any place in between. So quite complex. I just wanted to introduce them because they're related to the adrenal gland. And for our introductory cases or course here, Addison's is a deficiency. Cushing's is an excess. Thanks a lot.